Dear friends in Christ, welcome to the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is Saturday, June 22nd, 2024, Saturday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. As we come to the end of this week, Jesus gives us some food for thought. We all claim to worship God, but the truth is that as soon as we are out of the church premises, we behave like people who do not know God. In the attempt to meet our needs, we end up worshipping earthly things. We allow money take the place of God. How can we solve this problem? This is what we shall be reflecting upon today. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, you said that man shall not live by breath alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. As we feed on your word today, we ask that you grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and the wisdom to apply the lessons we learn today in our lives. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the second book of Chronicles, chapter 24, verses 17 to 25. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 89, and our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 6, verses 24 to 34. First reading, a reading from the second book of Chronicles. After the death of Jehoiada, the princes of Judah came and did obeisance to the king. Then the king listened to them, and they forsook the house of the Lord, the God of their fathers, and served the Asherim and the idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this their guilt. Yet he sent prophets among them to bring them back to the Lord. These testified against them, but they would not give heed. Then the Spirit of God took possession of Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada the priest, and he stood above the people and said to them, Thus says, God, why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord? so that you cannot prosper. Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has forsaken you. But they conspired against him, and by command of the king, they stoned him with stones in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king did not remember the kindness which Jehoiada, Zechariah's father, had shown him but killed his son. And when he was dying, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. At the end of the year, the army of the Syrians came up against Joash. They came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people and sent all their spoil to the king of Damascus. Though the army of the Syrians had come with few men, the Lord delivered into their hand a very great army, because they had forsaken the Lord, the God of their fathers. Thus, they executed judgment on Joash, when they had departed from him, leaving him severely wounded. His servants conspired against him because of the blood of the son of Jehoiada the priest and slew him on his bed. So he died, and they buried him in the city of David, but they did not bury him in the tombs of the kings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will keep my faithful love for him always. I will keep my faithful love for him always. With my chosen one I have made a covenant. I have sworn to David my servant, I will establish your descendants forever and set up your throne through all the ages. 
I will keep my faithful love for him always. I will keep my faithful love for him always. With him my covenant shall last. I will establish his descendants forever and his throne as lasting as the days of heaven. I will keep my covenant. I will keep my faithful love for him always. If his descendants forsake my law and refuse to walk as I decree, and if ever they violate my statutes, failing to keep my commands, I will keep my love, my faithful love for him always. Then I will punish their offenses with the rod. Then I will scourge them on account of their guilt, but I will never take back my mercy. My fidelity will never fail. I will keep my faithful love for him always. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Though Jesus Christ was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the earth. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubic to a span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, Will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. In yesterday's gospel passage, Jesus taught us to store treasures for ourselves in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor thieves can break in or destroy them. You may lose money, but you can never lose kindness. The good you do for someone today will testify on your behalf before God when you stand before his judgment throne. Confirm Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 46. Today's gospel passage continues that of yesterday. Having taught us to store up treasures in heaven rather than on earth, Jesus knew his listeners were questioning his teaching. If we don't store treasures on earth, where are we going to get money to feed, to cater for our health, to pay school fees for the children, to take care of our bills, electricity, house rent, medical, and so on and so on? In response, Jesus assures us, Seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 
In other words, God knows we need earthly treasures, but our pursuit of such treasures must not replace the worship of God. God knows we need earthly treasures, but our pursuit of these treasures, which are not secure, which are always passing away, must not replace our worship of God. Jesus is not saying we should not work for our daily bread. Even the psalmist declares, by the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and it will be well with you. Psalm 128 verse 2. However, in working for our daily bread, we be careful, be careful not to succumb to the temptation of bowing to the devil. Jesus says, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, Matthew 6, 24. One common example of bowing to the devil, that is, one, one way through which we serve mammon is telling lies. Why tell a lie to make money? Why do you believe, why do you deceive your customers in your business place? Don't you trust that God can provide for you? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon was not arrayed like one of these in all his glory. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Matthew 6, 26 to 30. God is not so irresponsible that he doesn't know your needs. God is not so irresponsible that he doesn't know your needs. God will bless the work of your hands as long as you make him a priority in your life. God knows how to provide for you. The only reason we keep bowing to the devil for earthly riches is that we do not trust God. We do not believe in God's providence. Stop being anxious about tomorrow and trust your life to God. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things, that is, all your heart's desires shall be yours. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Try and do your business without having to tell lies or defraud or deceive anyone. Let God be the one to truly provide for you. Let it not be that in the name of providing your daily bread, you end up offending God or committing a sin or doing things that God considers abominable. Abraham trusted God and he obeyed the instruction to leave his fatherland to an unknown destination. He eventually became one of the wealthiest persons that ever lived. Again, when God tested him with Isaac, Abraham obeyed and God provided a ram for the sacrifice instead. Obey God. Trust God. He will provide for you. You will not lack. This does not mean that you should not walk. Yes, as long as you, you, you go out every day and labor for your daily bread, God will provide for you. He will bless that, that effort. He will bless your efforts. The psalmist says that you see, God showers his gifts on his beloved even while they slumber. We are not saying you should slumber. No, work for your daily bread. But then make God a priority in your business, in your place of hustle. Make God a priority. Put God first. Do not go against your conscience. Don't try to justify it as, oh, no, I'm just trying to provide for my children. Provide, I'm just trying to know. God knows exactly what you need. Just as God provided that ram for Abraham, 
when he trusted God and obeyed to tie Isaac upon the altar of sacrifice, God will provide a ram. Dormoy will say, God makes a way where there seems to be no way. Look at the Bible. The Bible is a story of God's providence. The entire Bible tells us about the providence of God. From the miraculous birth of children to barren women, to the miraculous crossing of the Red Sea by the nation of Israel when the Egyptians were chasing after them, to the miracles of Jesus in the New Testament, such as the feeding of 5,000 with just five loaves and two fish, God continues to teach us a lesson in providence. Work hard to provide for your family, but know that you don't have to do anything evil. God can provide for you. Today's first reading continues the story of King Joash, the young king who beat the hand that fed him. Despite all that the priest Jehoiada did to protect him from being slain by Ataliah, Joash failed to protect Zechariah, the son of Jehoiada. Humans are naturally ungrateful. This is why only one leper out of ten cured returned to give thanks. Learn to be a grateful person. If people have been good to you in the past, also be good to them in the future. Be good to people. Learn to be grateful. Learn to say thank you. Not just with words, but with deeds. On the other hand, just know this, that people will never appreciate you. No matter the sacrifice you make for others, they won't appreciate you. So, make sacrifice, but don't make it because you want appreciation. Make sacrifice for others, but let it be for God. You are doing it for God. Only God can actually reward you. Humans will never reward you. Humans will never show appreciation. Settle that in your mind. Let it not be that because you did not receive appreciation from others, then you stop being good. Don't stop helping because people did not say thank you. Continue to help. Do it for God. Use it to store treasures for yourselves in heaven. Another evil of King Joash, apart from the issue of ingratitude, another issue of King Joash was his support for the worship of idols. Under his watch, Israel served Asherim, abandoning the ways of God. Zechariah preached against idolatry, but instead of changing their ways, they killed Zechariah, who was only a voice of conscience. Nemesis caught up with Joash when the Syrian army, with only a few men, massacred down the great army of Judah. This is what becomes of us when we worship idols, when we replace God with money. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, teach us to love you above everything else and to trust you with all our mind, heart, and soul. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. <music>